Right, everybody, good morning again. Um, we'll get started on our webinar. We have a few more people to join us, but we'll get rolling. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items. So everyone is in, um, is in listen-only mode because we are going to be recording this webinar. So we'll open up the lines at the end for some Q&A, or if you have some questions as we go, please feel to type them into your question panel in the uh, GoToWebinar uh, window you'll see in front of you. Okay. All right, so this is a bit of, um, we start off our webinars for those of you who are new to joining us, just letting you know where we've been. Um, so we started off, um, you know, last year in 2017, we went through and took the um, inventory through sort of an order to cash process. Um, so you'll, you'll see all the webinars we actually covered last year um, here on this screen. And then in 2018, we've taken a bit of a different approach. So we've gotten some feedbacks from some of you that um, you wanted further information on specific topics. So we're covering those off as well as we're introducing some of our, our partners as well, like we are today with, uh, with Planner One. So today uh, we're on Planner One. Um, I'll, later on, uh, after we finish the demonstration, you'll see I'll give you the address for where all of these webinars are recorded and stored up on our website. So you, if anybody missed the webinar today or you missed any of the previous webinars, um, you can find them up on our Beck Consulting website. All right, today, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about Planner One and visual scheduling. Um, so we'll, we'll introduce our partner, Planner One, here, and we'll look at visual scheduling within NAV. For those of you who do production planning and scheduling in NAV, you, you, you would know that it is a bit of a difficult process within NAV as, as it stands by itself. Um, it's, just, um, it's just not very visual, and most people like to see a visual Gantt short chart view of scheduling and then being able to incorporate some of your specific requirements in there as far as how things, um, your scheduling rules and things like that. So we'll talk about optimizing schedules through automatic rules that you, you would design yourselves. Um, we'll look, um, Rick will show us some of the, the views on how you can look at um, the production schedule in different formats. Um, we'll look at some of the co color coding markers for item attributes, things like organic or not organic and um, things like that that you may actually want to plan around those specific parameters. We'll look at grouping operations together and some of the capacity um, constraints here. All right, so about our presenter today, so I won't be presenting today, Rick will be presenting. Um, so Rick is with a co-founder of Cost Control Software. So Cost Control Software is the reseller of Planner One for the US. So uh, Planner One's been a partner of ours for quite a while, and we have a few implementations with Planner One with our internal clients. Um, and so I'll let Rick, you know, kind of introduce himself when he starts the demonstration um, in, uh, in a couple of slides. So he'll be able to, to do a little bit more of an introduction for himself. So kind of what is Planner One? So it is a fully featured visual scheduling solution built for NAV within the NAV code base. So it's not a bolt-on solution or standalone solution that sits outside of the system. It's built right within NAV. Um, it's available using various, like your web browser, your tablet, or within NAV. Um, and as I mentioned in a previous slide, you can have you can set up some rules for optimizing your planning uh, schedule based on those rules and how you want things to actually sequence within your schedule. And I did mention the color coding. So you know the color coding is easy easy visual identification of item attributes, and you can kind of see if you're going to be putting something that's non organic before an organic, etc. Okay, so those kind of things. So without further ado, um, we'll get the demonstration started uh, here, and I'll let Rick introduce himself. So just one second, I'll just move the screen over there. Okay, while well, you're doing that, hi everyone, my name is Rick Baxter. As uh, Kirk says, I'm with uh, Cost Control Software, coming to you today from uh, just north of Indianapolis, Indiana. Let me get my screen up and going here. There, I think, Kirk, can you see my screen all right? We can, yep. Okay. So I'm going to take you through some of the basics of uh, scheduling and how it relates to production orders. So we're going to really focus on your production orders and how you can take the information in any production order. Let me just bring one up as an example. I've got one in here for a strawberry swirl. Let me open this one up. So here's the production order, you guys. Now my screen might be slightly different than yours, but it should be fairly close. So here's the item that I'm producing. It's a finished good uh, 42909. It's a strawberry swirl item. And 
because planner one is all about time. We're scheduling time, dealing with the due dates. And Kirk, we can get a little feedback. Check check your user list, see if there's any open mics there. Well do. Go ahead. I'm not sure. There you go. There. There. Good for you. Okay. So uh, we're about scheduling time. So we've got due dates on a production order. We've got start dates and ending dates. We've got a quantity we're producing. And if we look at the routing, so it's very important. Now, my routing has about five steps to it, maybe six steps to it. Just depends on how you set your routing up. You may have just a single line routing step to produce what you're producing, or you may have multiples. So mine has things like planting, uh, batter, filling, oven baking, going to the freezer, these types of things. And they're all going to have a series of uh, dates associated with each of those operations, dates and times. And those dates and times, as you know, you should know this, is based on the setup time and the run time that you establish to the operation. So you take your quantity that you're producing and it's going to do some extensions here and come up with the amount of time. Now, <clears throat> what what NAV does not present is the date information graphically. So I'm going to go back one screen and I'm going to just I'm going to stay right here on the production order and I want you to see what this order looks like in a graphical view. So I'm going to just slide the screen down just slightly here. And you can see this is what you can have. I want you to kind of visualize this production order right on your nav screens. When Kirk was talking about it's all embedded, this is the concept of having the dates and times. In this case, times mostly looks like it can be done in one day. So these are the operations, goes to filling, it goes uh, to the freezer down here, and it goes to baking. Oh, the freezer is probably the last step. So here's the last step. Let me make that a little bigger. I'll open up that operation. There we go. And so there's the, the last steps, the freezer on the uh, 19th, 12-19. So these are the dates and the dates and times across the top. And your resources, and yours will be different. So you got to kind of interpret what you're seeing on my screen, relate that to yours, your uh resources your operational steps your your um, work centers so think in terms of your work centers maybe you even use machine centers that's what you would be seeing down the left side not not my sample it would have yours okay the length on what you're seeing here on the screen let me just kind of describe these bars this is an indication of the duration of time that it's going to take to do this work. So the long bars are, are some step or operation that's taking a longer amount of time. The shorter the bar indicates a short amount of time that it's going to take the the uh, the operators to do that that particular task. Now people often ask, well how does this get in here? How does this get in here? Because we have lots of new production orders every day. So I'm going to take you through a process. I want you to see this in terms of, and I want you to visualize this the way you would use it on a daily basis. It's really important for you to understand and visualize how you would use this software in your facility. So I'm going to take you through those steps. Let's just do the very first one. In fact, I'm going to close out of this, and I'm going to add a new production order. So I just, from right here, I'm just going to say new. Oh, of course, it's going to stop working. So let me just close that and we'll start it up again. Give me just a second. So the, the concept here is we really want you to see it as if you will be using this software. So I'm going to open up my release production orders and I'm going to add a brand new one. Now, as I'm adding this new production order, I'm just going to press enter, let it assign the number. So this is number 41. 400041. The source number is an FG and it is, I'm going to use that same one we just had, that strawberry swirl. We're going to make some more of those. And the quantity is, let's say, a 600. 
my due date, by the way, my ending date or my, my system date on my computer in the sample is uh, out here in December of 2018, the end of this year. So just just kind of bear with me on that concept at the end of end of the year. But I'm gonna I'm gonna set this out to the let's say towards the end of the month of December. I want to have this order to the customer, okay, a due date of 12 28 2018. So that's the due date of this order. Now, if you haven't added orders manually, because some of you may add them from a sales order and not add them manually as I'm doing here, or some of you may be using the planning worksheet and adding orders that way. When you add an order manually, you simply put in this top information, as I've done here, and then you press this refresh button. And what this does is the same thing as from a sales order or from a um, MRP run, it, it basically generates the line item down here for, for that order, brings in the ending date, which is always one day less than the due date, and then uh, shows you the start date so that you can calculate uh, so that if you start on the 24th, you should finish on the 27th. So that's the basic information in NAV. Also, what I've done is the routing that I showed you just a minute ago, this gets copied in here as well. And all these dates are then calculated for us based on our quantity of 600 times the um, times the runtime. And then it adds in if you had any setup time. Don't know if you're using setup time or not, but that's certainly available to you to come up with the total amount of time for each of the operations in in your um, production process, and and I look at this and I'm thinking, geez, you know, this is also, you know, it's text and it's columns, rows and columns, and and most people like a more visual view of what's going on in the production process to to make your finish good. You like to see it visually. So that's what we want to do. We want to send this new production order. I'm going to write this number down. This is 400041. I'm going to kind of stay focused on this one order today. Now, in your case, you may have 20 new orders. You may have 100 new orders that come in every day. I'm just going to have one. So we're just going to have kind of follow this, this one production order through kind of the cycle that you would use as you implement a scheduling solution. So I'm gonna close the production order. We'll come back here in just a moment. And I'm gonna open up, oh, actually, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up a little diagram that I've got that'll help you understand where we are in this process. This is our production scheduler embedded in your Dynamics NAV software. And what I just did is I did a manual production order. I just came in, the left side's your nav manufacturing, okay, and here's the production order, and the production order has a routing to it, the router steps, whatever those steps are. I manually added that production order. You may, depending on the nature of your business, you may, from a sales order, you get an order for a product, and then you go to your production orders to produce that item to fill the order. Or some of you may create production orders from a forecast, which can be picked up by the MRP worksheet, and then that produces production orders. So it's really immaterial to the scheduling board, which is where we're gonna go next, how the order gets in there. That's the point I wanna make. So we're going to kind of follow this, this kind of map here. This is where we actually are going to um, move. We're going to move the production order from the text-based information that you have in NAV to a graphical view in the Planner One software in what's called Production Scheduler. And the first thing that it does is Production Scheduler picks up these new production orders whether it's one production order or multiple production orders, it puts it into a special holding area called standby until the scheduler says, okay, I'm ready to add this to my schedule, which is the scheduling board. So 
and then we'll edit and eventually we'll publish this back. But let's just follow this first this first step here. I want you to see this process. So I've added the new production order, and now I'm going to go open up the the uh, the planning board. So I'm going to open up the planning board. This will be the first time you've seen this, and I'll give you a little little background on on what you're seeing here on the planning board. So this is our view of all the all all the work centers, all the production orders that are in your shop, okay, that are that are in process. The dates are across the top, so the top of the board is your dates because this is all about dates. The length of these, I call them stickers. I don't know if that's the right term. These represent operations. So each operation of your routing is shown in each sticker. So some are long ones. Like this one right here, uh, uh, 40,012, operation 10. You can see that right there on the on the sticker itself. This is a rim assembly. You probably don't do that, but that's, you know, the concept is that you've got this one operation and this one's a pretty long one. When that's finished, it can go into the next one. And that's an important point too, before we actually schedule the one we just put in. Notice these are very tight. It finishes this one, the next one starts. Finishes this one, the next one starts. The mission of the scheduling software is literally to optimize your schedule. I think the concept here is wonderful because NAV doesn't do this. Concept is we want to get the orders out the door as quick as possible. So we want to optimize the schedule. We don't want to have downtime. Like this is this is a good example. So on machine 120, look at the work, 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 each of these operations. Whereas on machine 210, there's there's a bunch of downtime. There's no activity on there. Okay, until we get over here until about the 14th. So there's this, it's it's better to have these machines productive. You want efficiency going on. So planner one is going to literally take all of your operations and whenever possible, it will group them together tightly because it wants to do a forward optimization. It says, as soon as this is finished, let's start on the next one. That's assigned to this machine. So it's gonna automatically group things and put them into this sequence. I think this is such a cool capability. It just, automatically is doing this thing based on, as Kirk mentioned at the beginning, based on rules. You'll set up, and I, I won't get into this in detail, but I there's a configuration area of the software up here where you literally build the rules that you want to use, and then it follows those rules that you establish when it drops and places the new stickers on the board. And the new stickers come from new production orders, which is what we just put in. So we just put in, let's go to the start of planning here. We just put in this new order, 40,041. This is it right here. And it puts it into standby. And so now what we want to do as a scheduler, so envision yourself as a scheduler, okay? Because I want you to understand you know, as if you're using this software, not me, you. And what you're going to do almost every morning is come in to this planning board and say, are there any new orders today? Do I have new orders that need to get scheduled? And so you're looking here in standby and there, in fact, there looks like there might be more than one. No, nope, just the one. Okay, so this is my my new order and this is the filling the oven baking the freezer these are and the batter work that's got to be done this is the production order now what i'm going to do before i hit the optimization and optimization is what actually schedules the software is i'm going to apply a filter to this production order so that as it gets scheduled you can actually see it get moved because it happens really fast. And if, if, you, if I don't filter this, you, you'll go like, well, what just happened? Uh, so I, I want you to actually see this in, work, in process. So I'm going to highlight this. So I'm going to highlight this one order. You can see how I grayed out. Everything else now is grayed out. So that way we can 
clearly identify this one production order, number 41, and we're going to see it removed from standby and positioned automatically onto the planning board, but it's going to be respectful. This is really key. It's going to be respectful of the other work that's already scheduled. So not only is this forward in its, in its looking in its process, it's also finite scheduling, which means if, if a machine or a, yeah, if a machine center or work center is busy with some other work, then this new one has to respect that and be added to the end unless the date on this production order can be produced before the other ones, then it'll slip it in the middle. So it'll do some analysis based on the due dates of this new production order to decide where I can position this along with all these other orders that are already scheduled in, in your production facility. Okay, enough talk, let's do that. So I'm going to come over here, and by the way, as you're learning this software, notice that there's only uh, there's only five tabs. There's this filter, which I just did. There's something called actions, uh, which has things like moving operations, so that you can do a manual drag and drop. There's a display, which allows you to set colors, set the time scale to go to. Uh, there's some zooms. There's you know so it's. And there's the optimization, which we're going to do here now. And then there's planning, which is to publish. So you really only have five tabs to learn. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. So let's let's get this scheduled on the board without further ado. So I'm going to come in here and I'll do a schedule from. It'll say uh, it sets. I've got a, a frozen period of seven days. Now the frozen period. If those of you that are involved with scheduling, the frozen period is says that if if a machine is active in that period of time, don't make any changes. You can add this new one seven days in the future. Now you can set this to two days or one day, whatever you want. So that's a parameter that you set when you install it. But I've got mine set at seven days. Okay, so Alan's asked a question already here, which I appreciate, Alan. Thank you very much about component availability as well as capacity. We definitely take into consider the capacity, and I'll show you in a minute what we can do with component availability. So, in other words, not schedule a run until all the labels, he's saying, until all the labels are due to be received. In other words, if, if I don't have all the materials I need to process something, I don't want to start that production order. We can do, yeah, I'm going to save that one. We're going to do a fixed date on that. Okay, so uh, let me just schedule this and watch what happens. So it's scheduling, scheduling, and then magically it, boom, it's gone. Did you see it? It's gone. Now, it's really not gone. It's basically taken those operations and positioned them. And I have quite a few work centers in my sample here. You will not have this many, this big of a list. You'll have just yours. You may have 10 or 15 work centers. I've got 20 or 30 simply because I have a lot of uh, different uh, examples for customers. But here, here it is down here. See, it's positioned. This uh, here's where it begins. So that's the first operation. Then it moves up to the. Uh, looks like it goes to painting, and then it moves up here to the batter, and then it comes down to the filling. Then it comes moves down here to the baking station. This is the next. These are the the work centers. So think in terms again of your list here, not my list. This will be your list based on whatever you've currently got in NAV. That's the other thing. A lot of people say, how much setup do I have to do to make this thing work? Well, none, because you probably already have work centers set up. You may already have machine centers set up. So there's no really additional work. It's just displaying or visualizing what you already have in your software. Planner One just grabs that data and puts it into this visual view and shows you where it's going to fit. 
okay, and where the where the dates are. Now, notice this one is a finish start, finish start. So it's it's saying that until this operation finishes, this next one can't start. So it literally pushes things out into the future based on your setup, your runtime, or if you're using the um, a wait time, it could use wait time. Maybe something has to um, process while you while you wait, um, or uh, you might have a send ahead quantity. And so maybe you don't have to wait until all the baking's done. Maybe some of the items come out early, so it, some of them could be moved ahead of time to the freezer. So it just depends on on the nature of your bill of not the bill, but the router, and how you have that set. It just simply displays the information. And it's this positioning, that's why we talked about the rules, the positioning of each of these operations is what the, the rules are doing and taking this information in here. Now, let me just, I'm gonna pull up this diagram one more time. So I want you to kind of follow through my steps here as we go. I, it's just important for me to, to make sure that you visualize yourself using the software. And I've got to do in like 35 minutes here, a quick kind of training of, of how this thing works. Uh, and certainly we go into a lot more detail when, you've, when you're implementing the, the actual software. But in general, you're going to, it's moved it to the planning board. So this schedule board that is done with that optimization choice up there, which has positioned your new stickers down onto the board. So now the next step is the uh, basically saying, I'm, I'm going to approve what it's done, or do I want to edit the information? So you as the scheduler can literally edit or approve or not approve this this positioning. So the scheduler has the last say. For example, let's say you're starting to do filling. Somebody asked, what if we're short some materials? Maybe I can do everything up to this point, but then all of a sudden I'm short some materials and this particular operation has to be delayed two days. That's the beauty of drag and drop. So let's go and do that. So I'm gonna come in here to my, uh, I'm gonna click this one. Oh, I'm, yeah, there we go. So I'm clicking the filling operation. I'm gonna come in here to a fixed date move and I'm gonna move this particular operation. See how I can just drag it. I'm just using my mouse. I'm holding down the mouse and I can, I'm just moving it forward in time. Let's say I'm just moving it two days. And now when I release, watch what happens. Did you see the ones below it moved as well? So successor operations automatically have to be repositioned because the oven baking can't be done until the fill is complete. So it, it maintains the logic that you've already built into your, uh, into your router when you set up that, um, the router for the finished goods that you're, that you're producing. Okay, and so now we have a new end date of the production order based on maybe a more realistic approach from uh, maybe a, some material delay. In fact, you might even want to put a message on that sticker that said we had a, a warning. Maybe here we'll come in, we'll do a message. Let's put a, um, I'm going to say not an error. I'm going to put a warning and says uh, material, oh yeah, my mouse, I changed my mouse. I'm just gonna put the sticker on there. So it puts a little sticker out here and you could put a comment, I wasn't able to do that with the mouse that I've got, sorry, changed mouse. Um, and so it is an indicator that might say something like material was uh, two days delayed because of shipment or bad weather or something. And then suddenly this, this particular operation has to be uh, delayed. And that's what that little triangle indicates is that fixed date um, 
is when we can start this. In fact, you could put a fixed date move at the be very beginning of a production order. You may not want to start the entire production order for four or five days. You could move this off, this sticker over, and then the whole production order is going to get moved. So a lot of control is basically what I'm, I'm kind of describing here. Now I'm going to cancel the filter here so you can see everything. So let me cancel that. There's all the all the production orders. Now, a couple other little comments before we go to the next step, which is to publish, is I want you to realize there's multiple views of information. So there's there's this ability to adjust the display. Right now, it's showing by color. Uh, the work order, uh, the color is by work order. Maybe you want it by item. So you could click the item and now all the same items are going to have the same um, same color to them. I had a customer that uh, produced a felt and they had green felt and red felt and so forth and they wanted to see their board light up based on the colors of the items. I think uh, Kirk you mentioned uh, organics mm -hmm. uh, versus you know you could have a color in fact, you can make a custom color scheme one here that would be, uh, a, you know, for the organics and they would light up a certain way. You can show them based on work order status. For example, I want to see all of my release production orders versus my firm plan production orders. They would show up then in those colors. And the one that's, that people use the most is this advanced delay. This lets me see my on time versus late. And my sample data tends to be a lot of reds, but the, what you really want is the, a lot of greens on there. So you'll see here the color codes are reds are very late all the way to a dark green, which is very early. So you can actually see visually any production orders that are in trouble. Okay, quickly identify those and then focus on those, the, whatever needs to be done there. So that's a little bit on the colorization. There are multiple tabs. So the view that I'm on right now is by Work Center. You also could see it by what's called the work order. So the work order Gantt chart basically lets me see all of the work orders by number. What was the one we just put in? I'll scroll way down here to the uh, 41. 41. So let me go down to this one. I got a bunch in my system here. So where's 41? Here it is. So there's, so there's our order. By the way, these these little green, you see these green and red uh, triangles here? This is really nice. This indicates the early start date and the due date. So when the when it slips beyond, let's go turn that one off. When it slips beyond the red triangle, that means that production order is is late in time based on when the customer wants it. So again, we're trying to provide visual views for you to see how your orders are doing time-wise based on when the customer wants them versus today, where we are in today. And then and there's 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 more views than that. I, I won't have time to cover all that stuff. So let's finish let's finish the cycle. And so the scheduling board, you got the concept of being able to visually drag and drop or you could just leave them as they are and then approve it. And that's done with the publish. So the last step to this process is that once you're pleased with the work, then we want to publish the information and update our production order, production order routers. So let's let's just do that. So I'm gonna come back, we're here, yeah, we're here. I'm gonna change the colors back to work order color. And what we're gonna do now is this tab under planning called publish. So I click this one and it says, do you wanna uh, publish the plan? So I'm gonna say yes. And what it's doing is it's taking any drags and drops and any changes that the scheduler made during the day, and it's updating your NAV software 
with those changes as well as the new orders. So we put in that new order, number 41. And so it's now getting updated. I think I did do a drag and drop on it um, with, with the appropriate date information that was generated. There, it's finished. It says data sent to ERP. So let me show you what's happened over here in the nav side. So we'll go back to our release production order. We'll come down to our 41 and we'll just edit this guy so you can see what's happened. So this is our strawberry swirl order. I look at the routing of it. These are the steps. Again, these are just my samples. You, you may have different uh, descriptions here for, for whatever operations you're gonna go through. But now the dates that are on here are the dates, the actual dates that were in the Planner One software. So it's giving us more realistic dates, let's put it that way, as to when this work can actually be done versus the NAV dates. Because NAV, bless, bless its heart, NAV is an infinite scheduling tool. It says, if you assign a work order to be done on this date, it says, okay, well, I'll just back up the number of, the amount of time, and if you start by this date, you'll get it done. Well, not the case because those work centers may be busy with other production orders. It has an infinite view. You need to really analyze scheduling from a finite view. And here's the other thing that happens is that if you have, if you actually are using works, uh, I'm sorry, machine centers, it will assign it to a specific machine within a group. So before in my crusting area, I had it assigned to uh, uh, just a general work center crust, but now it's put it on machine 340, which is where that work is actually done. So you also have that added ability to let the software make some uh, positioning decisions as to where to position, uh, position that work. And it's all written back here for the nav viewers to be able to, to see what's going on. Okay, and it also, I guess one more thing, one last little thing I wanna mention here is the ability to set, where is it? Right here, scheduling priority. We always, we had a lot of requests where people wanted to uh, expedite a production order somehow. And there was, there was nothing in base NAV that could really say, hey, we got to move this production order higher in the queue. And that's what this scheduling priority does. It's a one to five scale. It defaults to three. That's right in the middle. Okay. But if I bump this to a, a number one priority and rescheduled this production order with that change, as long as I have schedule scheduling priority as a criteria of my rules, then it's going to move that production order forward in time to help expedite uh, the delivery to the customer. So that's to accommodate those, those customers that are just gotta have it right now. And don't, and don't forget that same view is available right here on your production orders. So what's, what's really nice is that you can see the uh, the actual kind of a filtered view. This is a mini view of what you saw on the big board here, right on the on your uh, on the planning uh, on the production order screen as well. Okay, so that is in 35 minutes or less a kind of a summary of the process, taking from a production order onto the scheduling board, uh, using the optimization. You assign the rules drop it, visually drag and drop it, and then you can publish it. And we think that it's just awesome software. Uh, I hope you like it. Hope you're kind of looking at each other and going, hey, this would work for us. So uh, visualize this and, and, and let certainly let Kirk know uh, your impressions of what you've seen. I want to offer myself up for a more relaxed company specific demo seeing it here in 35 minutes or so 
doesn't really give you everything that the software can do gives you a little overview of the concepts but I really like to do it with some of your data and and show it to you that way so Kirk was uh, that kind of what you were looking for today exactly yeah so I think they um, I'll just switch the screen back over to um, to me yeah and then um, Just one second here, let me get the right screen. So I think one of some of the key um, the key takeaways from from this is really that um, as Rick mentioned, you're not really setting up a whole bunch of new data within the Planner One solution. You really it's building off of the data you have set up in Nav. So it's building off of your your routings, um, your work centers, machine centers, your times, your capacities, all of those kind of things that you're setting up in Nav. It's actually building on that same on that similar functionality to actually um, all, basically it's building on that data to actually show you a graphical representation and then also applying a bunch of other rules and some other setups and things like that that NAB doesn't have um, available to you. Okay. Co correct. Yeah. And Alan asked a question about capacities. Uh, it uses the schedules on the work centers. So when you set up the calendar on your work centers and machine centers, um, Planner One is honoring those capacities that you predefine on the work centers. So the the duration of the um, uh, time is going to be driven by how much time that you've uh, allocated in the work center setup. All right. Okay. So, so yeah, so I mean, as a bit of a review, so you know, it's really a visual scheduling tool building on the data you have set up in NAV giving you the ability to set up some very specific optimization rules for yourself on how you want that schedule to be heel to toed between jobs and things like that, making sure that your lines are full, giving you a very graphical representation. If you have nothing scheduled scheduled on a line, if you have something that's over scheduled, another line that's under scheduled, you can easily see that graphically within the tool. Um, get, being able to color code those item attributes like um, like a can size or a box size or you know or a, um, a organic or not organic that sort of thing, ability to group those operations together and then use this as a collaborative planning tool. So not only is it just the planner that has access to this, you could have other people in the organization like the sales team has access to it as well, so they can kind of get visualization and see what the plan looks like and then you know then they they're not always requesting from you can we do this can we do this can we fit this in. That's All right. So yep. again, just to summarize up, I mean, if you have any questions or you want to um, delve into this a little bit deeper, um, certainly reach out to myself, um, Kirk at Beck you know, and then um, if you're looking to schedule a demo, please reach out to me as well. And um, and then I'll coordinate some times with you and with Rick to get that set up with, you know, as Rick mentioned, with, you know, some of your company specific data, some of your work centers and, 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 uh, and machine centers, your items, things like that, and kind of show you how that can, you know, in a little bit more of your own data, how that tool can actually be uh, beneficial to you. Um, as I mentioned before, the recordings here are available on our website. If you go to betconsulting.com, to the right hand side, you'll see about us. You put the drop down ERP unlocked. You can have to hit register for future webinars there, as well as see any of the recordings from prior webinars. Okay. Um, so our next webinar coming up is um, the third week in April, just to give you a bit of a heads up that you should be getting that, um, that invitation shortly. Um, and that's going to be on BC notifications and workflow. So as I mentioned earlier on in the in the demo, um, various uh, people who have been coming to these webinars have reached out, and I've touched on BC notifications and workflow throughout the entire process each time I do one of these webinars. But people wanted a really a deeper dive into what how that how that functionality can be used and how the BC notifications and workflow can be used together to actually enforce you know enforce um, data you know uh, you know. A data within your system, making sure things are set up correctly, making sure that a customer, for example, has payment terms before it can be used and things like that. Um, and also taking that next step with BC notifications and being able to use it to actually send out notifications to customers and vendors. So you could send out your sales order confirmation or your purchase order or your sales invoice automatically, you know, by, by posting the invoice that automatically just sends it out to the customer. Um, so things like that. So that, that'll be our next webinar um, and look, look for that invitation uh, the third week of April. Okay. So again, that is, um, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Rick, for presenting the Planner One solution to us um, and, um, and giving us a bit of an overview for that. 
Um, again, the software has a lot to offer. We have a few um, customers of our own that are live using the system um, and are really seeing the benefit for the, the solution. And so um, you definitely reach out if you're looking for um, further information on the Planner One solution. Thank you again, Rick. And thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.